another big one. Good God! here, Lake Okeechobee, the 2021 Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit season is officially underway. Skeet Reese, you're a champ, dude. Oh, I'm talking big bass, final day rally. Uh, I mean, it was close to start, I guess, anyway, going into the third day, but uh, biggest bag of the event, it's a heck of a way to win. It was, it was, I, it's one of those mornings you just, you can't, you dream about it, but just very seldom ever happened to go drop 27 pounds in about an hour of fishing yesterday was like, did this just really happen? It was just complete mayhem. Just like big one, big one, big one. I'm like, this is legit. <laughs> well, uh, you know, right now the rest of the country is sitting in like a huge polar vortex. We're down here. It's warm. It's nice. So we might as well take advantage of it. Go back out get dialed in on how you won, and maybe see if we can get a little mayhem in our life and snatch a couple bigs. I want to hurt my feelings. I want to go see if I can catch another one right now. <laughs> Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Skeet, we made a nice little run down here this morning uh, to the juice where all the magic happened yesterday. Juice. Uh, I like the juice. Tell me like where we're at and why we're here. Why'd you fish here? Well, uh, we're down on the south end of the lake. I can't tell you if there's any particular names to where we're at, but uh, <laughs> I just know that, I mean, this looks so different than any time I've ever been down here. So yeah. the lake's completely changed since the last time I was here. Um, and I just was running around through this entire lower end of the lake just trying to find water fishable. In this particular area on the last day of practice, or I should say the first day of practice, late in the afternoon, about four o'clock, I roll in here. I'm like, hmm, this looks different. And there's some, I'm fishing the bank and then there's some isolated reed clumps and tules out here in the middle that I started fishing. I was just throwing a bladed jig around. I'm like, and I caught, I don't know, four or five, like two pounders. I'm like, hmm, let me. So I started bouncing around these little isolated clumps out mm -hmm. here and I had, wound up maybe having 10 or 12 bites and that evening just fishing around i'm like all right nothing big though like two pounders but it was like an area that i felt confident i could come in and maybe get some bites i didn't see a ton of boats just the opposite of the north and the lake where <laughs> yeah. it was and uh so for me it was um i didn't want to be fishing in a crowd uh if possible mm -hmm. so trying Which to get myself kind of hard to do on oak sometimes very hard yeah. to do um, and I wound up there wound up being plenty of boats here in competition, but not like some of the other places I'd been. And then, uh, so I started focusing on the isolated clumps out there and it worked out day one at 17, 12, mm -hmm. just fishing off out you know, the, the outside stuff. And then on, uh, day two did the same deal. Got lucky, got an eight and a half pounder fishing isolated clumps out here. Great day three was a grind i was like "Ooh, the wind was blowing really hard and i'd moved in a little bit closer uh, on the backside, a little bit more protected water still some isolated clumps salvaged the limit um and then yesterday or i should say on uh, uh day four is when the conditions changed a little bit i was like well i gone through and i fished some stuff i caught some flipping and the isolated clumps i'm like hey man they're biting this morning and then I decided, well, let's roll over here. And you can see, like, the wind's kind of the same direction as yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's pushing right up in these little areas. Um, there's little drains or they go back here, little marshy areas. And well, let's just go over here and try it. And I literally went, I didn't go very far before I had a bite. <laughs> and then I had another bite, and it was a big one. And then another bite, it was a big one. I'm like, wow. Um, so just kind of started figuring it out that morning and realized man there is there is something to this here there's one see there is something to it <laughs> <laughs> oh, i come off dang it <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah just like that it was so easy piece of cake <laughs> except that wasn't a six pounder but it was a bite so um so I just started, yeah, I just pretty much picked this whole shoreline apart and it seemed like the little isolated clumps were like those little clumps right there. Um, 
or definitely this. Okay. Yeah, these little clumps right out here. Uh, I never really caught one on the real thick, heavy stuff uh, inside. I tried flipping a bunch of them. And my guess is they are mostly um, or wanting to spawn. So they're kind of in the open water where they could, you know, have a bed. They weren't up under the matted stuff at all. Oh, and okay. So I felt like, you know, we're going in like a little pocket right here. And uh, I felt like I caught more males up shallow back in here. Um, I think I hooked maybe one one good one. Actually, that's the one I broke off. The only fish I really broke off this week and was, but it was mostly just the males. When I go back here, I get more bites, but they are smaller fish. You okay. Know, like, like, I think the biggest bite I had in the backwater here would maybe have been a four pounder or something like that. Um, but once you got out on the main outside stuff with the wind pushed on it, that's where I caught the bigger ones. Definitely. That's where them big girls was. The big ones are staged. And I don't know if they're staged or they're just spawning out there. Um, not quite sure what they're... Well, I thought that was a fish. But you got back here, it's like, oh man, this all looks good. Um, and it was good. Like I said, I caught a lot of fish back in the in little pockets. Maybe easier to get bit in this stuff, but your quality is right, just back out that yeah. way. And I think, like I said, everything back here for the most part was the smaller males. I mean, I should say, you know, smaller for compared to what I was catching on any other day. <laughs> getting right at the boat. Bingo. <laughs> right on cue. Hey, come here. Oh no, gosh. No, no. Oh no. Get in there. Oh no. Fish down. <laughs> Look at that. Thank you. What a good co-angler, man. Put some holes <laughs> down. I got you, man. So just like that, I mean, we get back in these pockets. It's, this is, there's a bunch of males, um, just like that. So. But that's not what we're looking no, for. No, 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 no. We that's come back start. down here for the hammers. <laughs> so this week, yeah, I mean, it's just been about a blade. Well, I should it's two prong approach to this week, and I was flipping a six inch general, but the big bag came. And actually, I, most of my big fish outside the eight pounder came on a bladed jig, and uh, it's kind which of which isn't anything crazy in Florida either, you know? No, like, it's not. It's it's. I mean, it's a bait that's fishable throughout the country. I mean, mm -hmm. this is. Um, I, I don't know what it is about this bait, but it, it really does work and it's, you know, super efficient, super effective, especially for fishing around grass. Now they are snaggy around the reeds and cattails, toolies and like that. They, yep. It's not a super weedless bait, um, but there's some about the action of the bait definitely works and for pre-spawn, spawn fish, super effective. And, you know, for this one, being able to, yeah, you know, I was kind of, I wanted a color that kind of matched the tilapia bluegill and which the green pumpkin and you know it's got a little white silver flake uh but to me the one of the biggest differences about what i was fishing this week is it's a bait i designed called the deal and i designed it specifically to be a bladed jig trailer oh, okay. and it's a vertical presentation because some of the you know trailers are out there or horizontal and they go kick side to side so uh, i wanted something that was a vertical swimming action that looked more natural on a bait and and i kind of got it off my pit boss oh which okay, is one yeah. of the you know it's one of the most popular flipping pitching baits there is and so i used the the same flapping technology somewhat uh, off the pit boss and put it as a tails on the deal and so the swimming action there's nothing that swims like this period on the market that yeah. i've seen there's yeah. nothing it's a completely different action um and the color i went with this week is called skeet's green money magic <laughs> <laughs> it made some green money this week um but it's a great bluegill bait fish imitation and it's got that little pearlescence glow in this tannic water i think that may have been one of the key key advantages is this play this bait just i mean it kind of glowed coming through that even yeah. though it's natural but it was definitely without a doubt uh one of the key factors this week because i know there's other guys fish this stuff that didn't catch what i caught Mm -hmm. and so I believe that that was uh, one of the key factors in catching a big old bag. But you know, the thing is, is I'm fishing on, I was, I was fishing on 15 pound Charlene fluorocarbon all week. And a lot of guys are like, why wouldn't you fish 20? And 
because I was fishing deeper out here most of the time in that four foot of water, I wanted to be able to get bait down a little bit deeper. Oh, okay. So a 20 pound test, um, my bait's gonna be, you know, in a one to two foot column, water column, a lot more, depending on how fast you reel it. So I wanted to be able to get that bait down in that three, four foot zone. So the 15 pound allowed me to fish it a little bit deeper, easier. Um, and I just a seven foot medium action rod, uh, and I'm throwing it on a seven to one gear ratio. Uh, so nothing. Not the rocket science, but it was just trying to target little open, isolated areas. You know, just like this right there before. That little clump right there, those two clumps, perfect place for the fish to set up and spawn. Um, and I actually, I, the, the only fish I lost all week that, you know, from breaking off, I lost a six pounder on that clump <laughs> right there yesterday. <laughs> and you know what the ironic part was? So he came up and it was jumping up in here um after i broke him off and i could hear him splashing so we came back in here a couple hours later a few hours later and I, I hear the fish splashing in here again i'm like what the heck so i crash into here he was stuck so the, the, the way to jig the hook was out he was stuck on the reeds in the hyacinth and couldn't go back in the water his head was in the water the whole time but his body was out of water Whoa. And I was, so I got in there, I was crashing in, I was just getting ready to grab him and I spooked him enough and I moved enough that he ripped himself free and, and got, you know, went back down in the water. I was like, I said to the thing, I was like, if I hand grab him, is that a legal catch? <laughs> he, he bit my lure before. So, but it was, he was all of five, maybe a little bit bigger. So Dang. it was crazy. I've never had anything like that happen before, so. And you could have got your chatterbait back. I know, that's what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> It is exciting, I'm like, man, there's a potential of getting a big bite again this morning. But then again, I mean, was, these Shiner guys could have already fished all the way through here and been pillaged. Yeah. The craziest thing about this lake though is like, you know, we were talking about how your, the fish you caught yesterday, a lot of them were new or fresh. And uh, like you could, you know, those guys could have fished it a while ago. Shoot, there could be another new six seven pounder that just decided to swim on up and yeah and fortunately that i think that was the case is that this week there was so many fish that moved up um even though you felt like you maybe fished an area out um maybe that day you did but and then again there's like so many fish under mats and back under stuff that are pre-spawners that haven't come out oh yeah and look at this they do, yeah oh you got this i got them you got them. Um, that, yeah, you don't know what lives around. That's uh -oh. a big one. Uh oh, it oh, is a big one. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, he's got me hung. Get back over here. Come on. Yep, boy. Yahtzee. <laughs> Yahtzee. <laughs> <laughs> the don't deal hammered it. Boom, I love this. Dude, look at it. Mm. And this, I mean, that's a great fish any other day, but yesterday I actually was throwing like fish like this. I'm like, yeah. after somebody, I'm like, eh. can I really just throw these back? <laughs> but I mean, that's a, that one's pushing four pounds, three and a half, four pounds. Yeah. So. When you have them days, man, you wind up with a big check and a trophy in your passenger seat. <laughs> I, I, I like days like that. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, that was, uh, all right. I'm gonna try to catch one. All right, you, catch one. You do you. I'll just be over here. <laughs> so that fish right there was kind of where some of them were positioned yesterday as these little, you know, drains or cuts going in, like little pinch points. And when you got the wind pushed in there, I don't know if they're just set up there waiting for food to blow by them on these little isolated clumps, but that fish was textbook from what the fish were doing yesterday or on day, day four, so. Yeah. Um, I thought it was going to be one of those five or six pounders at first, but. <laughs> I did too, man. When it took back off under that. I was like, under whoa, that whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, God. Oh, no. So right now, it's just, yeah, trying to get the big one. Right big one and doing the thing with the There she is. For real. <laughs> That's it. That's a big one. That is a big one. That's a big one. Dude, <laughs> Skeet's over here clearing the trolling motor. I know. Look at that, look at that. Come here. <laughs> Boom. Huh? The deal. The deal, man. And it was like you said, it was that sparse clump right there, 
rolling it around and i mean she thunked it that's so awesome nice fish dude and you know it was like we were saying a little bit ago like she's kind of dark but also they're like real that's, light that's, you know that's yeah that one there looks more a little more post-spawn to me than a pre-spawn she does she, look a little yeah. like kind of but either way man that is that's <laughs> awesome well i'll dip this one back you know last year was kind of a obviously a weird year right with the rona and everything but uh yeah, really we had the super tournaments so it was kind of a glimpse uh you know of how the pro circuit is this year um yeah and for, for you to come out here you know fishing the pro circuit this year and, and to, to get a win um you know it's it's just another checkbox on your resume really uh but how cool is it you know sure. to start that in this circuit too uh well it doesn't get any better I guess that's, <laughs> that's, that's what, yeah, first is best. And we all play to be in first place. And um, I was excited to come out and fish this season. Um, you know, to come out and fish against this size of field and get a W was like, wow, okay. That was a great confirmation that, you know, I still got it. And uh, you're always trying to find, you know, any competitive sport, it's, it's you know, a lot of it's mindset. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and I felt like 2020, I, I got back into my groove and started fishing the way I like to fish. And I saw my tournament results, you know, really come through on the Bass Pro Tour. Um, and even, you know, getting onto the, uh, the super tournaments that we did. And I felt, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I got it. I'm just, I felt right. And to be able to make, you know, good decisions on the water is, is the key to success. And... And most of the time it's, you know, fear is what keeps us from uh, making the right decisions. And so I've, I felt like I, I overcome those stresses and worries about what if, what if, and it was allowing myself to go fish the way I need to fish. And so this is the best possible way to start 2021, getting a, a W on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. And I'm hoping that uh, I can continue on through the rest of the season on both Bass Pro Tour and the Pro Circuit. Well, uh, you know, we've, Shiner guys are out in full force today. <laughs> yes, uh, and they can have it because uh, I think we did what we needed to do, man. We came in here, we caught some fish. We yeah. got we to gotta look at how you really did it this week. Um, and I mean, really, this was really the best cap to the week. You winning for you, sweet. We came out here, you caught him again, man. And you caught the big one. I though. caught a big like, one. Yeah, I'm like, not that I'd, I'd rather have I caught it, but I'm happy you caught one too. But it was, uh, yeah, kind of confirmation that what I figured out yesterday is like, oh my gosh, it's still, it was still working. It's still happening. It was, great. it was a great week. So can't complain. Well, congrats to you, Skeet. But uh, I got a flight to catch, man. So I think we should uh, pack her up and roll out. You sure you don't want to change your flight and fish longer? I could be tempted for like one more <laughs> cast. One more cast. <laughs> I can go about 20. <laughs>